Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by MarketFi. I'm your co-host, Joel Alconin, along with Dennis Dick. And we have Jeff Yady on the line. He's a founder and lead trader of Trader Minute. He's a former hedge fund manager. He's uh, done pretty well in a couple trader challenges. So let's talk to Jeff. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing fantastic. Yourself? Good, good on this, uh, the day ahead of a long weekend. Everyone's excited. Uh, but let's start Let's start with the airlines here. And uh, we'll go to just one specific. Let's start with, like, Delta Airlines. Comment, you know, and on the whole about the airlines here and then some of the individual stocks. They sure got whacked. Is it time to, to step into these stocks? Yeah, no, they got hit pretty, pretty darn hard. And, uh, you know, we, we saw Delta's earnings. Uh, several weeks back, and uh, you know we, we saw these airlines, especially Delta, cutting off low margin parts of the business, uh, and you know increasing buybacks, dividends, increasing shareholder value, uh, and then over the last couple of days they've been hit pretty hard, and you know a lot of people scrambling what's going on, what's happening, and there's a lot of different news that's been happening with them. Uh, but we, we had the Southwest uh, CFO, uh, Tammy Romo, and, and she spoke and basically said that, uh, you know, South, or Southwest was going to uh, increase capacity. And it, mm -hmm. it, it kind of set off some alarm bells uh, for what the airlines used to be. The airlines used to be this, this group that just chased market share at the expense of profits and eventually killed shareholders all the company they all went bankrupt at one time right. or the other you know but they continued to grow market share and so that kind of commentary out of southwest you know just kind of led a little bit of a fire sale there i you know it's interesting southwest expanding into some of these markets that delta uh, has actually been pulling back out of some of the low margin areas you know, i do think this is a buy opportunity for airlines like delta or Alaska Airlines or Hawaiian Airlines, uh, you know, something like Southwest, I still kind of stay away from a little bit, uh, you know, with that kind of fervor or with that kind of, you know, direction that they're moving uh, overall. I mean, we've seen that the, we've seen that uh, uh, the domestic or U.S. airline business has been strong, uh, but any growth that comes further in the industry is probably going to be a little bit more international. Uh, so for me, Delta is kind of my favorite in the group. I, I know that's not a very popular one amongst a lot of the analysts. Uh, there are a few analysts that have some, uh, you know, nice price targets on it. But I think if you're going to play the group, I, I think Delta is probably going to be one of the bigger outperformers of the larger airlines uh, uh -huh. overall. Jeff, related to the airlines is obviously the prices of oil. Oil's had a little bit of a rise here over the course of the last couple of months. We went from the 45 area up to 60 bucks here now. Is this going to start to impact the airline earnings here, this little rise here in oil? You know, most of them have, have done a good job of hedging, uh, you know, hedging and uh, you know, using this dip in oil to lock in futures contracts, you know, down the road. Uh, it, it's a part of the airlines that, that always exists and happens, and it'll affect the raw number, uh, you know, the earnings number at the end of the day. Uh, but I think from a trading standpoint or from just a sheer stock direction, we've seen the airlines go up with oil. We've seen them go down with oil going down. We've, we've seen them, you know, we've seen days where oil's up big, airlines up big. We've seen days where oil down big, airlines down big. Right. Uh, I, I think this really... I don't think oil's the big story for them. I really think it's about the margins of these airlines and the expansion or rate of expansion. And do these airlines grow a little, try to grow a little bit too much uh, that they kind of turn into the airlines of years past? Jeff, you mentioned building a position or nibbling here uh taking a look at delta airlines uh did get a green bar took the low out from yesterday did come back a little bit uh i know you have different time frames that you trade in here uh interesting area in delta hit 42.69 yesterday uh before they had a run up to uh the 48 dollar level it had a low at 42.83 is this something where you know you start to nibble here and Maybe, you know, take a partial position and prepare yourself to uh, 
buy at lower prices or are you more apt to you know kind of go all in here at this level and say hey if it takes out this 4269 I'll wait and eva- reevaluate yeah no uh, good question. like the where delta sits right now here you know in the 43 it's probably going to gap up a little bit this morning but uh it's it's sitting right down uh, in its earnings gap that it had there in April. And we came back and kind of tested that earnings gap early in May. Uh, and then this kind of fervor, you know, or the selling pressure, we've seen it come back and retest that area, happens to correspond with the 200-day moving average. So I think it's a very interesting place to nibble from an investor, investor standpoint. From a trader standpoint, it's probably one where I'd look at doing some sort of call spread uh, giving myself, you know, six months out, you know, maybe going okay. to some January call spread. And, and that way, if you do see Delta pull back into the 40s, you know, low 40s, uh, you know, 40, 41 area, you pull off that short leg and, and, and ride the long leg back back higher. I, I don't think Delta, with some of its buyback and some of the stuff that's just going on specifically with Delta, I, I don't think there's a huge uh, – Huge chance of Delta pushing below 40 unless we see some news worsen or we see oil move to 80. Uh, and so I think that's a really right here with the earnings gap, with the buyback, with the 200-day moving average. I think it's a very interesting place to start, I believe. Curious on your thoughts on the Deer earnings report here this morning. They kind of blew it away, and the street obviously wasn't expecting this big of a, a blow away on the bottom line. They made two dollars and three cents against analyst estimates of a buck fifty-five, and Deer is really popping here this morning. It's trading up over two dollars and fifty cents. It's been a perennial underperformer here. Really, when I go out to the weeklies or even out to the monthlies, Deer has kind of gone nowhere really since two thousand and eleven. <laughs> Could this earnings report here really kickstart Deer? You know, we saw la- or we saw just a little while ago on the 13 F that Buffett, Warren Buffett, has raised some of his holdings in John Deere. So, you know, when that happens, I never want to bet too much against it. Um, for for me, when I went through the Deere earnings, uh, you know, they're still seeing agriculture fall. You know, that business globally, um, you know, still fall aggressively. Uh, it's still profitable, which is a testament to you know management and Deere and what they're doing. The, the number I found to be most interesting was the construction sales number. Uh, I was up about 2%. And so for me, I, you know, deer from a trading standpoint can be really volatile from a day-to-day basis. Uh, and that construction sales number, uh, to me, looking at what Caterpillar's earnings were and, and kind of looking at the price action that Caterpillar has had, I'm a little more apt to lean more bullish on Caterpillar than deer. From a you know from a kind of a three to six month horizon, uh, simply because of that number. And whenever I'm dealing with a, a stock who or a company who yes they're profitable, but you know, they're, they're still falling in terms of you know different revenues and different parts of their core business falling. Uh, you know I really have a tough time chasing a big up move uh, like what we're seeing here this morning. Okay, moving on to some stocks that moved yesterday here. Lumber liquidators, we just had a blast on the show yesterday uh, when this thing went into action. <laughs> Crazy pre-market action really got overdone here. And now uh, now you just have this thing just kind of sleeping here at the uh, at the 2050 level here. Uh, do, you, do you get in, uh, hop into pre-market trading when things like this get involved? Or is this just like a crazy issue, hands off, just let everyone else battle it out? <laughs> yeah, for, for me, I, I will definitely get involved if it's a stock or a company that I've been following for a long period of time, and I feel like I have a little bit of a beat on it. Uh, with lumber liquidators, you know, it's not a stock that I, I've been involved with in any major way over the years. And so as, as you know, this whole story has unfolded, it's been fascinating. Uh, and the one thing, you know, about it is, well, I've, I've not traded. I've looked for places to possibly trade it, but everybody who's called the bottom on it, and there's been many. I mean, there have been many, you know, analysts and, and whatnot that try to call bottoms on lumber liquidators. It just keeps taking it out, taking it out, taking it out. Um, I, I do believe yesterday's gap has a better chance of being a bottom in the short term. That this gap here down has a better chance of getting filled than some of the other downward downside gaps. 
Uh, and that's just simply because, you know, we've seen some management shakeups and, uh, you know, this kind of feels just a little bit like some of that uh, ultimate uh, or final selling where, you know, those who have been trying to buy the dip finally have gotten wiped out. Uh, and, and so, you know, I looked at it yesterday. I was watching some of the options. I thought to myself, well, you know what? I'll wait, you know, a day or two, maybe till maybe till Tuesday next week. Some of the implied volatility will come off the options, and maybe it gives me a pretty cheap way to maybe bet on some sort of gap fill back up towards 25 here on lumber liquidators. Uh, so that's kind of what I've, I've been looking at with it. Jeff, we asked you a lot of different sectors. What are you focusing on today? Is there any specific stock or any specific sector that you think is setting up nice here that you're looking to put some money to work in? You know, I, I, I've been I've been really liking, um, you know, I've been looking for some put opportunities and, and whatnot in the energy sector. And uh, the price action yesterday was, was positive enough for me to actually wade into a few calls uh, it's not something I'm overly confident in overall, uh, and today probably going to be pretty flat to slightly lower. Uh, but within that group of, of energy, there's been a laggard that I, I suspect will be a leader going forward, and it's uh, uh, a French oil company, Total, ticker symbol POT. And uh, it created some really nice bottoming action just from a pure price action standpoint. Uh, there, January, February, March, uh, it's, uh, you know, pop back up into the low 50s here. Uh, it's kind of come back just a little bit, uh, you know, and, and something uh, fall in here on some low volume. So I think if you want to kind of make some sort of oil play where you're not really betting that oil prices are going to go significantly higher, but you're just kind of betting on some of the rotation that we're seeing from U.S. to Europe, uh, and playing an individual stock that has really shown some nice bottoming signs. Uh, Total is one that's on my radar. I believe, and uh, I, I want to look this up, I believe there was a little bit of an upgrade on it here this morning uh, by J.P. Morgan, but uh, uh, I'm not exactly sure what that was about. I just saw that as I was kind of coming through here this morning. Jeff, final market thoughts here. Rad up, made new all-time highs. Had a really quiet week, holiday week here for the long weekend. Um, any thoughts? Really tight ranges here. Last three or four days up near the uh, all-time highs. Uh, any any words of caution, or you think we're just a little, another little consolidation here to move higher? Yeah, I mean, almost historically tight, right, in terms of the market itself uh, over the last several months. Just uh, almost, it's not something you see very often. Uh, you know, there's that saying in the market, never short a quiet market, right? And, uh, you know, I don't know if that applies really to this market. I'm not sure how quiet it's been. Uh, yes, if you look at the S&P, you go, well, it hasn't really moved. Okay, it's quiet. Um, it's one where we're seeing some significant breath erosion. Uh, just in terms of stocks making new highs versus new lows, uh, that's not nearly as solid as what it has been at other highs in the market. Uh, stocks trading above their 50-day moving averages or 200-day moving averages are fewer than what they've been over the last year, even though the market's making new highs. So there's some breath erosion. We've seen some underperformance in transports and, and, uh, and uh, small caps a little bit here and there. But every time over the last several years we've talked about any sort of erosion in the market or any sort of, you know, potential warning sign, right? I mean, last year was all about the Hindenburg omen and, you know, market's going to fall. We've, we've seen the market just continue to grind higher. And to me, that just speaks to the incentives of the parties who really kind of control the market in terms of the central banks uh, around the world. And uh, so it's one of those where, I'm really curious what Janet Yellen has to say here today. Uh, I do think the market is in a position where if it starts to sell off a little bit, that's selling to get pretty aggressive uh, overall. And so I think there's a lot of downside risk, but I think it needs a catalyst. And so far, uh, you know, we just haven't really seen much of a catalyst. Maybe the CPI here today, you know, a little bit hot on, you know, the, the CPI less food and energy, but, you know, not really in the long term, but is it enough to catalyze a little sell-off here after Janet Yellen? I okay. think the risk is there. 
but uh, but overall, I think we're still talking about a market that grinds higher, uh, you know, even through this summer. Jeff Yady, founder and lead trader of Trader Minute, former hedge funds manager, giving us a great look at the markets. Thanks a lot, Jeff. We'll talk to you again soon. Appreciate it. You guys have a great day. Thank you, Jeff.